I recently reviewed Black Panther Wakanda Forever and didn't like it. It was a spoiler free video. This is gonna be the spoiler bit. So I'm gonna go over some of the plot points, some of the things that really rub me the wrong way. And uh, you know, we'll chat about it in the comments for a little bit. We'll have a great time. Unless you love the film and you can't take criticism, then maybe just don't watch. Let's get started. I would also implore you to subscribe to this channel. If you like honesty, if you don't like people that just kind of half-ass do reviews and really let you know what they think without being scared of getting some mob after you. Because at the end of the day, this is a silly comic book film from a company that's making billions of dollars. Okay, they're gonna be just fine. Uh, I like plenty of bad movies too. I don't consider myself above anyone when it comes to film criticism. What makes a movie brilliant as opposed to what makes it a pile of shit. It's just if I see something I don't like, I have a rubric that I follow. Visuals, storytelling, audio, you know, just the production in general, the acting, the, the characters, all of that kind of fits into place. And then I say, all right, how did it fit into place? Like a, like a well-constructed puzzle, or the pieces that I'm forcing in, or the puzzle only has half the pieces. I think you get the metaphor. Let's talk Black Panther Wakanda forever. Now, my memory is gonna be cloudy with the chance of meatballs. I'm not gonna get everything touched upon. I will forget things, I'll say things incorrectly. You're just gonna have to deal with it. I'm just a basic run-of-the-mill guy, okay? I don't consider myself like a Siskel or Ebert. Just a regular Joe Schmo. So the movie starts decently strong, mourning the loss of Chadwick Boseman. T'Challa, I guess. But really, it's kind of Chadwick Boseman, their morning. He died of a blood disease, I think they said. I mean, they don't even show how he died, really. He was just ill, it's off camera, you don't see any of it, and Shuri's struggling with this fact. She's trying to find a cure for him by replicating the plant. She can only get it to like 25%, though. So it's not gonna be enough, and really, it's too late anyways. He's, he's already gone. The mom comes out, she's sad, she's somber. Hey, your brother's cashed in his nine lives, it's over. So they have a nice scene where they're carrying the casket. And then this is quickly followed by a very bizarre shot. One of many questionable decisions that Ryan Coogler will make. And that's the coffin going vroom and flipping up in front of the camera. So you see the symbol and then it gets taken up into the ship via these blue sonic waves that rise it up into the air. I don't know what his deal is with these in the film, but he uses them like four or five times. We're constantly seeing people get sucked up into the UFO. It never looks good. It's always awkward. We then jump to a scene out at sea at night featuring a new female protagonist who will, I guess, die. I, I really don't know. They kind of build it up like she's gonna get away and then a helicopter crashes and we never hear or see her again. This scene amongst many is very puzzling to me. The government is out here in the ocean looking for vibranium down below. They're drilling. So how do they check what's going on down there? Do they send a drone underwater? A remote control device that you can easily maneuver in between the rocks and it's very low risk? Or no, you send two people down there. <laughs> just, like what? With all the technology available in the MCU, not just to the superheroes, but to the government, they're still sending two assholes down in suits to check things out. Naturally, things go south real quickly. They're taken out and then the whole ship is overrun by um, Aquaman and his friends. Namor, Namor, no more do I care how to pronounce his name, has a crew go out there, take out the ship. They emit a frequency so beautiful from their mouth holes that these guys just jump ship and drown or are stabbed and killed down below. It's unclear, it doesn't matter. Anyway, the lady and the guy get away on a helicopter and this is where Namor flies with his dumbass little wings that look ridiculous, grab the chopper and do this Bugs Bunny Looney Tunes-esque spin. Into the water below and that's the end of that scene. It's to establish not only is there a kingdom down in the ocean ruled by a guy that's got the dumbest looking wing feet ever, but also that there's vibranium outside of Wakanda's borders. Borders, mind you, that apparently don't monitor the ocean below at all because Namor and his crew are able to just swim under there and pop up whenever they want. It's so strange because Wakanda's supposed to be this large, vibrant country that's got all this immense resources, a great army, and all this tech at their disposal, yet they let Namor's crew in like two or three times. You would think after the first, 
you would maybe build something below that could monitor. You know, you think you'd put a team there, but that's another problem with this film. The scale is so tiny. Wakanda seems like it's five women with spears and like a group of bros that work for that other tribe that like just hang out. That's it, that's the whole army. Occasionally in this film, Martin Freeman will show up for reasons I can't possibly understand. It, he has almost no purpose here. It's just to keep the government off Wakanda's back because Wakanda's got a secret that they're keeping from Everett. So Everett's got to like toe the line and be like, it's not Wakanda, but it might be someone else, but I can't say, but it's probably someone else, but you didn't hear it from me. It's so ridiculous towards the later half because at that point, Princess Shuri's already kidnapped. They've already like gone to war once with Wakanda and still you have Everett like, I don't know. It's just not Wakanda, okay? But I don't know. Also, Julia Louis-Dreyfus is in this. National treasure, I love her. She's hilarious. Feels very out of place in this movie, but also all those scenes do. But to be fair, all of the government scenes feel out of place. They could be removed and nothing would really change at all. And they probably should have been because then this would be shorter and be over faster. Queen Ramonda lost her husband, she lost her son. All she has left is Shuri, and Shuri's really keeping up with her labs. She doesn't want anything to do with anyone else. She's focused on her work. Fine, fair, whatever. Doesn't really change the character much from the first film, so nothing's really seeming to be much of a struggle for her, even though she says she's sad about her brother. I need a little bit more evidence of that. Okoy wants her to go on a mission with her. They need to head to the MTI campus because a new character named Riri, I think, I think that's her name, I don't know, strong female 19 year old lead. She built a device to prove to her college professor that she could that will locate vibranium. This fell into the hands of the government and they've been using it. So naturally, this chick is a major threat. Instead of Namor talking things out with the queen or doing anything remotely rational, he goes after this young woman and he's gonna kill her on the spot. I mean, he doesn't, he actually imprisons her because I guess he had a change of heart. I, things are really unclear in this movie. At certain points they want to do something and then the next scene they change their mind entirely for reasons that don't ever add up. Oh, I should point out Lupita. She shows up the second half of the movie, not really doing a lot, but I have to say, I have to say, damn, she got some cake. I don't know when it happened. I don't remember the cake being there in the last film, but now she could open up a fucking bakery with that ass. And I was all in. I turned to my buddies and I'm like, now we're getting somewhere. Now I'm invested. Just keep your eye on the prize, Coogler, and we can get through this movie together. Anyway, Okoy convinces the queen that Shuri should come with to help her on this mission. And the queen's like, if anything happens to her, it's your ass. Like, I already lost these other two. I don't want to lose Shuri. And Okoy's like, I got full responsibility. She's with me. What's the worst that could happen? The princess gets kidnapped. And all I'm thinking the whole time is, you took one person with her? It's just Shuri and one of your guards. Where are the rest of these ladies with the spears? What are they doing? Like, this is supposed to be a major country in the world that has all of this tech, and all you send is one lady with a spear with your daughter, your last remaining blood relative, your own child, who you were already concerned about. But yeah, send her with the spear chick and everything's gonna be fine. Except for it's not. This takes place like 45 minutes in, and I think it's genuinely the first action scene in the movie, and it's not good. It leads to a really lame car chase, and a scene where Dominique Thorne's character takes these guys to a secret location in like a hangar, where she has all this technology she's been working on, including an Iron Man suit that she hasn't really tested, is unsure if it'll work, but flies perfectly, and she can control it like she's been doing it her whole life. Seamlessly deking and dodging out of harm's way. And the effects are so bad. Look at the visuals from the original Iron Man, and then look at this new shit, it's like night and day. I probably don't have clips, so I'm just, I'm just saying it for when you see it in the theaters. Take a mental note at how bad this stuff looks now, how rushed it looks. So Namor ends up capturing both these two dumbasses. Meanwhile, Okoye's fighting on the bridge against three or four of them, not really doing much damage. They get stabbed and then instantly heal. So I'm sure that'll be a big factor later on in the movie. Not really, not at all, really. Upon returning to Wakanda, Okoye is instantly stripped of her role within the community. She's just a regular peasant now, regular street urchin, has nothing to say. It's just so 
unnecessary because not very far later, the next time we see her, in fact, she's already doing something else for the cause. She's basically in the same role as she was before, but now wearing a Power Rangers suit. That's right, Shuri has designed some of the fuggliest looking suits imaginable for the guards to wear. They all look like Power Rangers now, and at one point they do everything but say it's morphin' time. Oh, and Riri's got a suit of her own that she's building back at Wakanda. Th th when did... <laughs> God, the timeline of this whole thing is such a shit show. This brings us to the point where Fancy Feet breaks into Wakanda again. They already kind of know he's coming, but I guess don't put up any defenses. Engage all defenses, my ass. These guys didn't even put up a fence. They certainly didn't put up a fight. This leads to the one oh shit moment of the film, where the queen is dead. I'd say it's emotional, but that would be a lie. We then cut to another funeral scene. It looks like it was shot the same day as the previous one. Nothing's really changed about it. And I also like the fact that I don't know what the fuck happened at this point. Because Namor's like, let that be a warning to you guys. We'll return if some- I, I truly forgot. I forgot what happened there. But they stopped killing them for whatever reason and they leave, and then they just give them all the time they want to build up their defenses or their offenses, I guess. Because then we have what has to be months of time go by where they're building new Iron Man technology. They somehow have a Titanic sized ship. Maybe that was already built. I don't know where they park it and I don't know why they have it because it is ridiculous. It's like Wakanda's flexing to the max. Like, yeah, we're rich. Check out the, uh, check out the ship. <laughs> Have you seen it? It's just a giant mammoth of black stone that slowly goes into the ocean. And their genius plan is to now go on the attack by driving this big ass hunk of crap out into the middle of the sea and then just dropping some of the guards off the side with ropes. Like, this'll get them. We know we can't really penetrate their skin, but we do have spears and a complete disadvantage. What, what is the logic here at all to going and fighting out on their turf on a giant rock? That's it. That's all they have. There's nothing. There's no, like, gunners. There's nothing to fight with. Oh, yeah. You do have Iron Man girl flying around in her Gundam shooting stuff. That thing looks atrocious. And then... We have Shuri, who finally gets the flower perfected so she can become the new Black Panther. I guess there was one more oh shit moment. And that's right here when Killmonger shows up in her vision instead of her father or her brother or any of her ancestors. It's Killmonger. Why? Because people like Killmonger. That's it. It's not because of whatever lame reason they said where she has to confront her vengeance. She has to avenge her family and the only way to do it is becoming like Killmonger. There was such a lame excuse to use this guy again. I'm sorry, it just was. Suit looked kind of cool, although Letitia Wright is so small, so tiny, like a little wire. She's like a little stick that I feel like a gust of wind would send her flying off into the stratosphere, just <laughs> I'm always ready for war again. This ends with a Mission Impossible 2 fight on the beach. There's some slow motion, there's... It's a decent fight. It's pretty good. Um, ultimately, she doesn't kill him, though. And instead, they're like, hey, why don't we be best friends? And you, you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. Not literally, because that hurts. I scratched you up a lot, and I see you're bleeding. Don't want that. But yeah, you take the seat, we'll take the high road, uh, you know, literally and figuratively, and I won't kill you, and we'll work together. And this all could have been done, like, two hours ago if they would have just had the same conversation instead of him kidnapping her and the other woman and I don't know what the plan was there. Prophet, like, there is one end credit scene. It's just as dumb as the rest of the movie. And that is the revelation that T'Challa actually had a son who looks to be like eight or nine at this point, was hidden, kept secret from the family. The mother found out. But Shuri was left in the dark the whole time. Didn't get to hold him as a baby because they didn't want him to be in the spotlight. Didn't want him to have that immense pressure. I guess fair, but also like kind of shitty that she didn't even know he had a kid. Like, I, I don't know, this was supposed to be a touching moment, but I was just like, what? Kind of a D-bag move, dude. And now you're dead and, and like, it's just, Kind of, yeah, just a messy thing. And also, she's the Black Panther now, but she's probably looking at the kid like, oh, shit, this is awkward. Uh, are you the Black Panther now? Have I just been demoted? Because this is still like a man's world. 
Yeah, I'm probably gonna have to kill you, dude. I have no connection. Also, when she extracts that juice from the flower, from the magic flower, there's like a whole bowl of this crap. She takes a teaspoon, there's a ton left. What did they do with it? They just pour it down the sink, right down the drain? I mean, I feel like they should have bottled it up a little bit, but she did plant a whole garden full of them anyways, so I guess they don't need it. Still, it just seems like an awful waste of, of that good stuff, right? <laughs> I should also point out the underwater world weird like what is their technology who built this stuff I, I understand it's a comic book movie but at one point he's like check out that thing and a sun comes out of a pyramid structure and he's like yeah i gave that to my people how what how do you have a sun down there how is this working but whatever we don't spend any time on it it's just yep i did this i'm great let's move on now we have some nets down here where people like to lounge on. Over there, you'll see uh, another portal thing that I sometimes drop down and rise up from because I guess we have a heart on in this film for people floating up in the air. I'm over it. It wasn't good. I just didn't like this movie, top to bottom. Um, I went with a couple people. One actually loved it. He gave it a 10 out of 10. No joke, no irony there. And I love the guy, so it's okay. I'm glad he liked it. The, the woman we went with, she thought it was good. I, didn't think she th I don't think she thought it was great. And then the, the, the other guy fell asleep halfway through. And he woke up turning the action at the end. He thought it was trash. I, I'm more in the trash camp. This just did nothing for me at all. It, it, it's messy visually. Way too colorful. It's got a Disney afternoon vibe to it. The story's all over the place. Not very compelling. And Shuri, the actress Letitia Wright, she does a good job. The actors are all kind of trying but nothing's really sticking for me. Those are my scathing thoughts on Black Panther Wakanda Forever. Let me know if you saw it in the comments below. Were you like my friend? You thought it was 10 out of 10 incredible? Or were you more like me where everything was just kind of miserable and long and never had an end to it in sight? Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you haven't. I post tons of movie related content each and every week. Would love to have you stick around. Take care. Thanks again for watching the video. Did you know you can become a Patreon at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies for just $1. Now you can of course give more. It goes all the way up to 30. I kept it realistic. And at that price point, it's actually very special because I allow you at that tier level, Mithril, to not only suggest a movie for me to watch, but I have to review it and give you a shout out in the video. People seem to be really liking it. I'm having a fun time doing it. so. Jump in while you still can, while the water's warm, because who knows when this is all gonna change.